Did you know, in GTA 5, Steve Ogg, the actor who voiced Trevor, recorded some of his scenes in his underwear to stay in character? You're listening to the Xbox Hub Podcast, the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the XboxHub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode number 103. My name is Gav Bryan, I'm going to be your host, and my virtual opposite is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right, good, thank you. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, we are just the two of us today. We've done a two of us before when Richard was at EGX. But poor James's laptop died at the last moment, so we couldn't get anyone else on. Well, they're just keeping very quiet. And uh, so it's just me and Richard, which is great. We'll be, we're fine, aren't we? I think there's a little bit of self-sabotage from James, but we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. Um, so, Richard, what have you been up to this week? What have been going, what's been going on? I well, I think last time I was on the podcast, I was at a house party. Oh yeah, last week, yeah. and uh, this week I was out again, um, at a place called Flight Club, which is not Fight Club; it's Flight Club, right? Um, which has nothing to do with flying. It's it's a it's basically like a, a darts place. <laughs> um. Right. But you know how when you go temping bowling, you've sort of got all these lanes and then depending on how well you do, you get a little quick cartoon on the screen and that. Like saying if you've got a strike or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this place, they've got the dartboards all set up and they must have sensors at the back for wherever you're hitting and stuff. And it sort of does the similar similar thing there. Wow. Um, but rather than just play standard darts, they've, they've got these this software built into it and you can play I think we ended we played snakes and ladders and and stuff. It was really, really good. Ah. Um I think there's quite a few of them. We went to the one in, in Leeds, but I know that there's definitely other ones dotted around the place. Uh but it was good fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Great. For went out for a friend's birthday and uh he's he's mad keen on his darts. We're supposed to be going to see the Premier League of Darts with him next year when that's back on properly. That's, um, a, that's, that's a wild night, those darts nights, isn't it? it yeah, crowd. I mean the Premier League. They do it. They do it in all the arenas around the UK now, and it's just <laughs> ten thousand people trying to trying to watch this uh, <laughs> less than a foot. Is it a foot? What foot? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A little foot, and then that's it. He's got a small little area. It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> but no one goes there to watch the darts. Let's no, be honest. No, they don't. They're all drunk and dressed up as women. That's all right. It's a great laugh. <laughs> um, good. Well, I've not really done much this week. You know, I've had a lot of games to review. Um, I've been watching Succession. Um, do you know about Succession, Richard? I've seen the trailers and it oh. just looks like a lot of brutal <laughs> call-outs of uh, people. If no one's seen Succession, it's in its third season now. So the third season is getting played weekly on Monday. It's on Now TV or Sky Atlantic. And Succession is a series about uh, a family, very much like the Murdochs. Um, and you've got a head like Richard Murdoch type who owns media tycoon who owns loads of them, very rich people. And it's the, the idea of succession is about who's going to take over from him as he's quite old out of the two brothers and the uh, daughter. But it's much more, <laughs> more interesting than that. It's, it's about kind of the, the, the super rich really. And it's a sort of, maybe it's a drama comedy. It's written by um, one of the guys who did Peep Show, I think, um, right. originally. And it's it's just really addictive TV. It's really clever. Uh, you know, just very kind of, really kind of good dialogue, quick dialogue. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's an age-old thing of people stabbing each other in the back all the time. Things someone making a bid for power it going wrong things events happening and um it's brilliantly acted it's really well done and what what it does a really good job of is like anything with 
because they're all very super rich and some of them are very horrible people. And it's really good at sucking you in. So you're like, when you watch characters, you like your favourite characters. And it really, you get sucked in. It's a brilliant thing at the end of season two when it sucks you in, but it reminds you, these people are horrible. Mm. <laughs> and it's really good at doing that. Really pulling the, um, the rug from under your feet, thinking, don't get too comfortable. These are horrible people. <laughs> yeah. It's and really, really good. You love to hate. Yeah, you do love to hate. You do have, you know, you do kind of want, yeah, you just love seeing that kind of like. I mean, it's it's in a sense, and they hate you saying it's, it's nothing new. People used to watch Dynasty in the 80s. <laughs> it's yeah. not as good, but it has a similar principles. You know, very super rich people trying to backstab each other. It's just, it's just, We kind of enjoy that for some reason. But yeah, it's very good. And I've also been watching the third season of What We Do in the Shadows. Have you seen that, Richard? I know of it, but no, I've never watched it. And um, What We Do in the Shadows is a, is a kind of vampire docu-comedy um, starring Matt Berry, um, Natasha, I forgot her name, I forgot the other guy's name. Um, and it's based on the film, What We Do in the Shadows, by um, director of Thor and Gemini and Clement. And it's, yeah, like a docu, he follows these vampires, like a documentary following them around. It's very funny. And it's in its third season. It's all on BBC iPlayer at this moment. You can watch all the episodes. I highly recommend it. There you go. That's my... Do you need to have watched the film beforehand? No. No, you just go straight in. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. Really, They're only, tw- yeah, what, 25 minutes long or something? So they're great. They're really good. Very funny. Um, good. Let's talk games. Let's get into the games. Uh, Richard, what have you been playing? What's your game that you've been playing? Um, I've just finished my review of uh, House of Ashes the next one in the Dark Pictures anthology yeah um, you've have you played the other two I played the other two yeah so this one is set during the Iraq war and there's a group of American soldiers that believe that they found where Saddam Hussein's been keeping his weapons of mass destruction um so they go to investigate and end up falling into this massive pit and uncovering some ancient temple from about 4,000 years ago. Right. But in this, in this temple, um, they're not alone. Um, there's a couple of members of the Iraqi Republican guard that have also been caught under this. Um, but then there's also these weird alien type things. Um, so that's, that's the big, uh, thing that you need to run away from this time, uh, but I I really enjoyed it. I think I preferred this one to Little Hope, which was the second one, mm. and all about the witch trials. I think House of Ashes for, for me personally is much more my kind of sci-fi horror, um, which I much much more enjoy than say just a scary story. Um, but it's got an, it's got an interesting dynamic with the characters this time, so. Apparently, two of them were previous were, were are married, um, but they're in a bit of a fractious relationship. Um, and then one of the Republican guards is one of the playable characters. So there's that um, okay. dynamic between the rest of the Americans and this guy. Is like, are they gonna? Is he gonna help us or is he gonna stab us in the back? Um, which I don't think the previous games have sort of had. Right. Uh, you, you sort of know these characters are all a group of friends or, or colleagues or whatever, or the the students and, t- and a teacher in the last one. Yeah. Um, but they've all known each other already. Um, so it was interesting, this one, to sort of... I, I felt you were able to role-play it a little bit more um, based on how you wanted these characters to, to act with each other, um, which 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 was interesting. But for, for me, the, the, the best part is, like, the last the last hour or so it's just absolutely brilliant i think um it's one of the best things that supermassive games have done in terms of, of storytelling oh. and it just it completely um is is very left field from what it's been um what house of ashes was until previously and, and then you get this this not necessarily a plot twist but you you, you something just clicks into place and uh, the last hour is absolutely brilliant and it's interesting because I think now they they because they were going to do nine games, weren't they? Um, overall, they announced right. that when they demanded that, and now they're they're doing it in seasons. I think 
So I think the next one that's going to come out, which is a trailer for it at the end of House of Ashes, is season one, I think. Yeah, and mm. end of the first season. Uh, was that called The Devil in Me? Uh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, which sort of looks looks like a, a booby-trapped house. Like um, I'm getting Saw vibes from that, which would be interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of what supermassive games do been a fan since until dawn which, mm. and these uh that pictures games have been really good so far but i think the last hour in house of ashes just sets it apart from from the others for me really enjoyed it it's a gameplay very similar as in a mixture of quick time events you know make a decision to go here or there is it yeah yeah uh, but they've, they've added um so you've got a a full 360 control of the camera now. Oh wow! Which yeah, which really makes a difference in in the in this temple as you explore it and and find all the secrets and that, which is something that the game's not had before. Right. And in this setting, I think it really really does help you to just get a feel for, feel for what's going on. And you've got um, you've got a, a flashlight toggle button now, which I think is the left bumper or right bumper. Um, you can toggle your flashlight on or off, whereas okay. I think before it was just on. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Um, it? I don't think it, there's any gameplay uh, effects of it, but it's just nice to have something like that, I suppose. Is it? Does it look okay? Does it? I mean, I mean, I think Little Hope, you know, the facial animation stuff is great, but the problem with Little Hope I had a bit was it, we just felt like it was a bit too. It was just too dark. <laughs> just one of those in darkness. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this one's the first one that's been on next gen consoles. So we need to stop calling it next gen now. It's yeah, been a, yeah. it's been a year, has not it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one's the first one that's that's come on uh, optimized for Xbox Series X and Series S, uh, and you can, there's a noticeable difference. Um, but yeah, we're, having this flashlight does help you illuminate a lot of things. Okay. Um, so there's there's fewer dark bits dark corners that you can not see in and stuff if you wanted to see in you can easily just walk over to it and and take a look right okay oh good so how's what did you give it richard uh, i gave it four stars oh good good okay um i've been reviewing and playing call of duty vanguard um and Call of Duty Vanguard takes place in World War II and it's split into three options. So you've got the campaign, you've got the multiplayer and you've got zombies. Um, I've played a little bit of, um, well, quite a bit of multiplayer. I only just started zombies and I've played a lot of the campaign. Campaign, first of all, is it takes place with... Um, it follows a kind of group of soldiers um, and you've got sort of in there a, a British soldier, an American, a Australian and a Russian um, sniper who's based on a real character and you basically have these four people who are kind of like it keeps going back flip, flipping time zones so you start in this kind of like they're getting captured by Nazis the four of them seem to be a sort of like group a sort of like dirty dozen special commando group, and then it flashes back to how they how they got there, um, and you get that's where you go out to your kind of missions and um, different environments. So you might start on the D Day landings, then you go to an island off in the South Pacific, fight against the Japanese as an American. There's a whole section with you um, in Stalingrad as it falls from the Nazi invasion. And the rise of this sniper character, um, I I think the campaign is brilliant. I really, really think it's good. I think it's one of my favourites at the moment. I really like the storytelling. I think that's why I really like the kind of. It feels quite tight. We having these four characters as a focus and going backwards and forwards, and there's some really good performances in there as well. Um, and I, you know, I think some of the reviews for it have, you know, really, I think generally the campaign's been reviewed well. I think some people have said it hasn't got those big set pieces. I disagree with that. I think it's all a set piece. Um, it, okay. Because it looks great. It just looks really good. It's one of the best looking games out there. Um, not only just cutscenes and 
the the character animations are just amazing. Um, but you know, it's just a really small example. In Stalingrad, you kind of at the start of this mission, you start off in your dad's house where you live. And just the detail in the house of like 1942 Russian architecture and the interiors, just like you just want to just look around this room. Um, so it, it's a really great looking game. It's just, it's just great to kind of experience and be in there. They, they do always do it brilliant, the Call of Duty uh, team, and especially the facial stuff has always been great. You can see every kind of line of emotion. Um, yeah, so campaign I'm really, really enjoying. It's short. It's about five hours long. Um, five to six, the, maybe. The full campaign. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I don't mind that, but others will. I think they always used to be about eight hours or something like that, didn't they? Um, so maybe I think, I think people have been a bit sort of like should feel a bit shortchanged by that. And you know, if you're just getting Call of Duty for the campaign, which a lot of people are, like I would if I was buying it, um, it's you might go, oh, you know. But what they, what you've got there is really good. This quality um, multiplayer. It's multiplayer. <laughs> There's twenty maps, which is a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it's kind of interesting going back in and seeing all the way you kind of levels up the menus and how all the upgrade stuff. It's all very neat. They know what they're doing, but you know, you're you're playing against people who are brilliant. So, you know, I kind of came in quite quickly with it, and already people were like prestige once or something in my group so you end up you end up getting quite you just for me if you, you know being quite average it's like you just have to wait to go oh, just, i'm not bothered there's a couple of new modes in there which are which are good like a, a two versus two mode um they're good but you know it's still it's it's quite a toxic area still yeah. and i'm not playing with a mic on you can hear them off mic going, you know, there's a brilliant thing when I was the worst player on the team and they're abusing each other, number one and two in the same team. So <laughs> have a go at me if you can have a go at anyone. Yeah. And zombies is good fun. You know, if you like zombies, it's more of the same. It has extra little bits. It's, it has a, it's lots of upgrades and, and things to get hold of, you know, like um, things to aim towards. It's, it's really good. I'm just not a big, I'm not really good at that kind of like defend an area on the right. so I'm not really good at it. I just don't like that stuff. But I can see why people will love it. So I think as a package, it's brilliant. You know, you've got a fiber campaign, multiplayer that would last you and zombies. It's it's great. It's a great it's a great package, I think. You can't go wrong with that. Twenty maps is a lot to be yeah, fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um am I right in thinking as well that the the zombies mode is a sort of acts as a sequel to a previous one? Is it developed by a different team? I think you might be right there, yeah, yeah. It, I'm sure I read somewhere about it. I That's think right. I think is, I is was trade... writing the launch article. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but yeah, I'm, campaign wise, I like a lot, um, and the other two people will still love. It's much more of the same. Um, I still like playing um, one against one in Call of Duty. <laughs> That's what I like. That's the only mode I really like to do. <laughs> Free for all. Yeah, I quite enjoy that, even though I'm terrible at it. Um, but the dogs are a nightmare in multiplayer. So you, when the dogs, when people release dogs to kill you, they just kill you. It's just like yeah. a perk. Yeah, like a thing if you kill people, they just get you. Okay. You just got to, you got to be quick when you hear those dogs coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty. There you go. Um, what have you got next? You got another one, Richard? Yeah, I quickly before I jumped on here, I um. Was had a a quick go on the San Andreas Definitive Edition. Oh, did you? Launched into Game Pass today. Um, yeah, and I think we're, we're going to talk about them a bit later on. Yeah. Um, but what I think what they've done is is an unusual approach to a remaster. Rather than update the graphics as much as they can, they've tried to keep it as much of how it looked when it originally released. Um, which I think has put a lot of people off. Uh, some of the character models are a bit dodgy, um, but it's it plays as as you, as you remember the the, right. <laughs> the handling on the cars is pants. Um, right. It's just as far as from what I've played so far, the 
all the the same voice actors are in there and it still sounds pretty good with the same sound files that they've got in there um i did go and have a a quick game of pool in one of the bars and the physics are all completely off from what you would expect nowadays but it it's, it does feel a lot of how it used to be so in from that point of view i can't really fault it right but i think a lot of people are put off that it's not um it's not been updated into a game standard of 20 of, of nowadays mm. if you know what i mean it's very much set in its old ways but it's how people remember it, I suppose. So you don't want to lose that but too much. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Because they, I think there's lots of people who have modded it, modded GTA 3 and Andreas with these kind of hyper-real graphics. And mm-hmm. and they look great. <laughs> and you're kind of they were the ones that, that got taken down. Yeah, though. they got taken they like, down. Oh, you and you, do that. you kind of go, what is that really? That would have been exciting. Yeah, I can understand yeah, what they're doing. They're going to want to keep that same feel, but then why would you just play the other game? It's played mm-hmm. the old San Andreas game. It's sort of like a weird thing when you're just playing it and you just added a few... I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? A few lighting effects. And Is the gameplay different? No, not, not from what I've Jesus. experienced so far. But then they, they, they got rid of all the, the other ones from the various online stores didn't they they were like if you're gonna play it now we want you playing the definitive edition right so i know that xbox only had um the san andreas port which was terrible because it was ported from the mobile version and then back onto console and it just didn't work um but i know the playstation had um the ps2 versions of all three and they've gone now so i i quickly panicked bought them a few weeks ago (laughs) but (laughs) Yeah, it's, it, it it did seem weird what what they've done. It's weird. It's like Rockstar. Are they really? Are they short of cash? <laughs> Definitely not. It's so odd. Such a weird thing. Yeah, and it's I I I stupidly downloaded it when it came to the game. It's twenty gig. So why is it? Why is this twenty gig? <laughs> and it's on the hard drive as well. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think people like it. It's free on Game Pass. Is it free on PlayStation as well? PlayStation got uh, GTA 3 on uh, PlayStation okay. now. Right, fine. Um, and then Nintendo Switch got nothing. Right, okay. <laughs> Good. Right, San Andreas. Well, there you go. Are you going to play the other two? Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay. I, I was always in two minds about it, and then I watched a lot of gameplay stuff that came out yesterday from from the guys in New Zealand that got access to it early and I was like you know what most of, most of the soundtracks in there and which was a big deal thing for me yeah um so yeah I've I've bought it um so I definitely will be playing the other two good um I reviewed a game a little indie game called en- Encodia um Encodia Maybe that's so it's uh, in, in, yeah, in Koja. And it's a uh, it's an interesting little point. If you like your point and click adventures, it's it's very interesting. It started out this game as a as a, a crowdfunded short film about a girl, like a nine year old girl, and her robot companion. And it's set in the sort of distance, not so distant future, like two thousand and sixty two, I think, in a sort of like cyberpunk version of Berlin and the short film got funded in 2008 and then they decided to make the short film and develop it into a game a point and click adventure using the same kind of characters and that's what you've got really it's like uh, you play the the little girl on the robot who are there they're sort of living on the streets uh, but on a roof with you know almost homeless a little shelter and she's lost her parents and the robot is in is caring for her it's like that's the purpose of the robot from the kids to be her sort of nanny in a sense. And but at the age of ten, she's got a, and she's come up to ten. She's got a, the robot's got a message from her father that that has a significant effect on everything and all those around her. And, and there's people after her trying to stop her get this message. And and yeah, and the game just involves like an all point and click when you you're kind of going through the areas, um, you know. Picking up things, interacting with people, trying to work out 
what to do next. It gives you clues. There's a sort of easy mode which gives you more clues and a hard old school mode which doesn't at all. Um, <laughs> the, the world looks great. It's sort of like the imagination of the world and the characters. And the weird thing is the cutscenes are like, obviously I think they might have just taken them from the short film. So there's a slight difference in uh, frame rates, which is a bit weird. And I kind of worked it out and, ah, oh, that's why they've done They've taken the cutscenes from that. Um, it's good. The problem is, is you can't, you, there's a thing that's happening a lot of point and clickers on console now, which uh, you press a, a, um, a button and they show you all the areas that you can interact with. Um, mm. This hasn't got that because, and it's really hard to see certain things. <laughs> you just can miss certain things for ages. You just on screen go, I know I might be need to get something by. Oh, and you suddenly just walked over it and it's done. It's just flashed really quickly in front of you and then gone. Um, it's that whole thing of not having a mouse and going to console as well. It can get it's a little bit tricky. This isn't unplayable at all, but it's it can get a little bit annoying now and again. But overall, it's a good. It's a sort of like about a ten hour adventure. Tells a good story. I was interested in it. Um, I think it's about twenty quid, but so it's a bit much, I think probably. But it's 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 worth a look, if, especially if you like point and clickers. And is 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 your review out now for this? I hope so. Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe. I remember I had a look at it last week. It came out last Friday, I think. And um, the art style, really, really unique for it. Um, and then I was reading, having a quick read about it. And it was supposed to be, there was supposed to be some humour in it. But from what I, from the screenshots that I saw, it just looked very bleak. <laughs> so is there is there much humour to it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it has that weird thing. Is like, I think I said in the review, I just, it's a little bit about, I don't know who, it's aimed at, is it a family game? I think it is a family game. It feels quite cartoony as well. Right. Um, the, the kind of like guards fall over each other. It isn't, it, it definitely isn't adult themed, you know, they're not thrown. So it has definitely got that kind of like family stuff. But yeah, it can look a bit bleak when you look at the screens. But yeah, it's a family game. It's a family, but the puzzles are very hard. So I can't imagine an eight year old playing it. Because um, you really have to kind of like, has that old school going, how does this combine? I would never have guessed that. And I did cheat. I looked at sources. I, was like, Gee, I know I couldn't stop it after, after a while. Yeah, I tried not to. Um, good. Um, should we have a little, just a really brief chat before we go on about Forza? Because Paul talked about it last week. He had the review. He's given it a review of five stars. Um, yes. He wanted to give it six stars, I he believe. Did, he did want to give it six stars. Um, and we've played it um, you've played it since last Friday. I played it from Tuesday when it came out. And we've had a go online together. Um, what's your, well, please. Um, what's your um, thoughts, Richard? Um, I was I was surprised we managed to get on on Tuesday. I know that we arranged this uh, launch launch night session, but I didn't expect us to actually get into a a race. Um, I was glad I was glad we did. Um, it ran. It ran fine when we were in there. I mean, waiting for the 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 um the thing to start up. I did hit a few invisible walls, mm. uh, but I just put that down to launch day things were nothing serious. Um, but I liked what they they changed it a little bit. So when we when we pre previously played, we were we were in teams, um, but now it seemed to be a bit of a, every man for themselves, which I think works a little bit better because it's not. If if you're doing bad, it's not it's not down it's not down to the rest of the team anymore. Yeah. It's purely down to you. And I think it does. From what I'd seen, they were trying to get rid of the, the a bit of the toxicity in the online community. Right. And I think by getting rid of that team based adventure mode, whatever it was called before, and, and then and also getting rid of those um, little bits in between the races where you had to dash off to the next um, yeah 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 and i mean it's enjoyable as it was i don't think it added much to it it was just a, a, a little mini race um but now they've 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 done um is it up to five races in these sessions and then you get points based on your performance and then there's an overall winner that's right yeah 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 i think it's um it's an improvement the online um and then it also feeds into the the accolade system as well 
which yeah that's good isn't it i like that yeah there's going to be people chasing all those shots. yeah and it's quite nice about the cars isn't it there's a kind of car collection thing it shows you to get a, and maybe they had this last time i don't remember it it's it's you got i don't know six aston martins to get and then you get a prize at the end of it so it yeah really, yeah it really all that stuff are really kind of you just want to do everything and beforehand That's you used it, to just it? do just the barns and stuff but you really want to do it you really want to it gets you addicted already tapping into it in it yeah <laughs> The sense that you must collect everything. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for me. It's a night- I've got FIFA, the same thing. I want to do everything there, collect everything. Yeah, it's a heron. But yeah, no, it's great. It's, I've, I think it's really good. I, it keeps um, saying, you're not connected, and then connecting me all the time. That's what it seems to do. I think that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, that as well. Um, but it's, yeah, it's great. It looks great, doesn't it? It feels a, quite a nice environment to drive around, around in. It, yeah. It, it doesn't feel... I think if you're coming in expecting something completely different, <laughs> it's a different location. It's Forza, isn't it? It's Forza Horizon. Yeah. Um, it's weird. I would, to each installment, I think they've sort of added new features to it without skimping out on anything else. Mm. And it certainly feels like it's happened again here. So it's obviously got, I remember when the first one came out and the, and the, the big talking point was these showcase events where you yeah, got to yeah. do crazy things like race against the train or whatever and they're they're still in forza horizon 5 but they absolutely feel like they're pushed to one side now it's like we've got them but we've got all this other more interesting stuff yeah, now. Yeah, yeah like the expeditions are just really really good fun when you go to the um the temples and this and yeah. the, the ruins and stuff yeah yeah it's good isn't it it's great it's going to be playing that for the next year and or so <laughs> off and on <laughs> <laughs> Um, should we t- just have a little bit of chat about news and stuff? Um, what was interesting is the GTA Trilogy track list came out um, yesterday, and there was all the songs. And first of all, there's a couple of there's a few songs missing, isn't there, from the originals? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Michael Jackson's "Billy Jean" is not in there in Vice City, which was um, people going mad about. Yeah, that was the first song that, by default, uh, on the original. That was the first song that played on every single radio station, that's but I don't that's... think that was in. Um, I don't think that's in the the mobile versions. I think that license has been gone for a while. Right. So, I think a lot of the songs in here, are the same ones that featured in those different versions that have released since. Right. Uh, some there's some big big omissions though. What for, what? for me personally? Tell me. Um, Rage Against the Machines, not in there. No. Um, Lover Boy working for the weekend, which isn't like the, the biggest song on the soundtrack, but it's just a song that me and my friends used to sing while we were getting changed for the, changed for PE back at school. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, things no. like that. Yeah, yeah. And how many are they missing out there? Is there quite a few, or is there? I think it's about forty. Wow. Everything in, everything's in GTA Three. Um. Then it's just, it's from Vice City and San Andreas, but what made me laugh was one of the um, the Love Fist songs was missing from Vice City, which is a oh, fictional yeah. band that, that <laughs> Rockstar made up for Vice City. And I was like, how can you not have one of your own songs in there? Yeah, God, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, when I looked at the the list of songs, I was like, oh my God, yeah, this is great. I remember this, and it made me think about the whole thing of like playing Forza, for example, is the whole thing of soundtracks to a game that are kind of licensed tracks, but also that thing of radio stations. Because GTA was the first that really did that, didn't it? Am I right in thinking this? Yeah, certainly one of the biggest games. I think previously games games that had soundtracks and licensed music, but it was mm. all just the one radio station, if you will, mm. playing playing it on repeat or having the one DJ introduce the songs. Uh, it definitely felt like GTA was the first one to introduce different radio stations where if you didn't like one particular genre, you could easily switch up to a different one. And you had those fantastic things, which is, which is the chat radios as well, which are great. <laughs> Just yeah. Endless kind of like hilarious yeah. chat and people ringing in. And it, it did feel like you were always, you always were, um, you know, finding something new or 
hearing something yeah. new. And that's what was really exciting. I think what would be really interesting, if you took the radios away and then played GTA, would it be the same same game? No, absolutely not. And that was that was the big thing for me before I, before I decided to, to buy it was... If the if the the music's not in there, if if the radio stations are in there, if it's completely changed, it just wouldn't feel the same at all. It's so intrinsic to that mm. gameplay. It's, it's the radio stations. Like I know that I mentioned about the the other song, but my friends and I, we still quote the um, the little adverts that they did in between <laughs> the songs to each other as well. Yeah, they were good, and they yeah. See, <laughs> this makes me want to play the bloody game just to hear the radio stuff again. There's oh. just so much of a part of, of the GTA games. Um, I mean, in, I don't think they could have done it without it. In San Andreas, if I remember, you needed it because you were just driving from one bit to, to the next. When you had missions, it was like drive across the whole area. It was like yeah, you needed that radio map. station. Yeah. Mm. Especially yeah. when you get to is it the second island and it's got the, all the outback and everything. That's right. Yeah. Just get lost for hours at a time. Yeah. Oh god, I can't, I can't do that game again. Got Grand Theft Auto Five coming out, the remaster in March. Oh. Do that again. I might have finished these three by then. But... <laughs> yeah, it's something. Know. It's something because the Forza soundtrack's really good fun as well, isn't it? It's 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 not people don't don't seem to like it as much as the other ones, but I think it's good. Yeah, I think they what they they sort of took it to the next step and had um, these these DJs interact with with what you're doing at a time and stuff and it feels much more like a living breathing world as a result and mm. um, also it's really good to know that when these came out when gta 3 came out in 2001 um we didn't really have spotify at all we didn't have itunes we didn't have ipods with we that whole thing of mixtapes in a sense or having this mm. idea which just wasn't around you you'd put together a sort of tape of stuff or you'd go and burn a, a cd at hmv <laughs> <laughs> but it was a kind of great thing to just also like you said it's just like having a great some great albums on there isn't it the best of yeah in game yeah i, I even i even bought the the full cd soundtrack box set oh did you ah yeah, good Good. Uh, they'll still they'll be under bed somewhere, but yeah, just yeah. I'm glad that most of the soundtracks in there, and I'm obviously wasn't expecting everything to be in there, but I'm happy with what they've put, what they've managed to get in there at least. Yeah, absolutely. Well, enjoy it, enjoy it. Maybe come back and tell us more how it feels, the whole thing when you've done it all next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometime in 2022. <laughs> Um, other news, there isn't much going on at the moment because we're kind of getting towards the end of the thing. But there's a few things here. There, um, there's another Xbox <laughs> Game Pass game coming out, um, the Gunk, um, which is we saw in all those game shows a few while ago. That's um, that's coming out onto Game Pass on December the 16th. Uh, I like the look of this. It's a, it's a. What would you, how would you describe this, Richard? Third person action adventure. Yeah, it's just the, the, uh, James and I have spoke about it before, but it's the name's just really off putting. Yeah. And imagine in the podcast in a month's time, people are going to be like, oh, what have you been playing? I played the gunk. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. I mean, that might be James and I's puerile minds more than anything, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. It does. I mean, it looks good fun. It's you know, you, you know, you go around an alien planet, sucking things up. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a week after Halo though, as well. Which I, think... <laughs> I mean, I was surprised. I thought maybe. Yeah. Should, why did they wait till January? Because there's nothing going on in January. It's an odd one in in terms of release day. It's a strange one. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's coming out on the sixteenth. But you know, it's another Game Pass game, guys. Just mm. rich of stuff, isn't it? Sure, and well, yeah, I can understand that not everyone will be playing Halo, so it's there for those that are yeah. interested. It in does feel a bit more family or yes. maybe, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Um what's interesting as well, they've they've 
there's been sort of interviews with uh, Bethesda um, this week on loads of different sites. Um, and there's sort of more stuff from Todd Howard talking about Starfield. It was a very interesting thing. I think he was he was talking about in the interview, you can see a few times he was talking about there's a t- toss up between Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six, and they mm. kind of felt their time they should just do something new, so they focused on doing Starfield. And he he kind of briefly mentioned Elder Scrolls Six, and he's saying it's you know it these games normally take five to six years to make, so everyone was thinking about it, thinking, well, if Elder Scrolls is still in the sort of planning stage, we're looking at twenty twenty six. For the next one, 15 years after Skyrim. That probably sounds a bit realistic, doesn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, because Starfield's a year today till it comes out. Yeah. Um, I also read that they had a one page for uh, Fallout, what Fallout 5 was going to be like. Yeah. Um, but I, the, way, the way that he was speaking, I'd be surprised if we get a Fallout game on this generation of console. Yeah, yeah. I mean, be disappointed, but that's that's how it's how he made it sound. I mean, Elder Scrolls Six might be at the end. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, crossover between the next one. Where the hell that's going to be? So, yeah, I mean, that's okay. I'm, you know, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? That you think, you know, we talked about this before about how hard, how much time now it does to create these big games. Mm-hmm. You know, when we think about the three hundred and sixty. There was Oblivion, Skyrim within that generation, wasn't there? Yeah. Which is kind of amazing. And like you think of Rockstar, you had they did GTA Four, Bully, Red Dead, and GTA Five in that generation. So, and it, and since there for Rockstar, they've done Red Dead Two. <laughs> and 18, 18 versions of GTA. Five. Yeah, there. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting, just that kind of length of like what you have to do to kind of do this game. I mean, you know, you can, you're going to, I think Starfield's going to be really interesting, isn't it? And they, he was talking about it coming, maybe some content for it will be in the summer, which you can imagine it will be when it, at mm-hmm. the big conferences showing it off. I think people, people just want a, an Elder Scrolls game or a Fallout game in a different setting. Yeah. And I think, I think they're aware of that and they're trying to do it. As best as they can in Starfield, yeah. Which, if they, if if that's the if that's what they're going for, I don't think they can go much wrong. No, too wrong with it. No. Um, the Game Awards are coming, um, which I forgot about after last time, <laughs> um, and that's going to be happening on December the ninth. So we'll probably do something for that, maybe the day after. Um, but what was kind of thing, Jeff Keighley, he kind of said there's going to be lots of reveals. I feel like we've done something with Jeff Keighley recently. Um, anyway, he says there's going to be a load of reveals, um, I think up to 40 new games or something. Is that right? Have I made that up? Yeah, that's that's where I saw. Uh, 40 to 50. He did, because um, when you were on about Call of Duty Vanguard just earlier, and you were on about the fall of, of Stalingrad, I was like, this sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. But we saw that bit during... Yeah opening night live that he did that's right yeah he did which was that august july august time yeah that's right and that's why it feels so bloody soon i thought oh, i was just here <laughs> um there had you know already there's been sort of rumors today of two microsoft xbox exclusives coming you know leaked already one from mm. the people we have a few people and uh Another one I've forgotten. So, so the other one for is Obsidian. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that'd be exciting to see some new stuff because we don't know much about next year, do we? Except for up to April time, do we? But after that, yeah. there's nothing else. apart from Starfield. There's there's nothing else we know the first about. First half of next year is pretty stacked. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's going to be exciting to see what, especially you know, we chat about it in this generation of consoles and what they can do. Because we're not seeing it yet, are we at all? We're seeing no. it, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, I think. Um, Elden Ring network test. I think we are gonna we're gonna we hopefully with Paul next week he's gonna play some Elden Ring. Elden Ring over the next few days. 
I mean, Maybe not when he sees these prices. He sees, sees that thing. But <laughs> because not everyone got a closed network test code, um, they've been selling them uh, online <laughs> for up to, how much is it? $250 at least. On eBay. I mean... We, this game's out in two months <laughs> as well. This is a, a closed network test. Is it, what is it, three hours or something? Is it going to be? Uh, yeah, there's four or five different sessions, and then that's it for yeah. like an hour each. Wow, and people are very, but people, yeah, people, people are meant, people are mad, yeah. So, they, it's just, yeah, there's a market there for it, so people are obviously going to try and put their codes online, and people yeah. are going to pay for it, people do it, yeah. Um, it does look good, Elden Ring. We talked about it last week. I'm I'm excited about this. I think Paul's are going to be our man for it, isn't he? Um, uh, yeah, let him let him suffer. Let him suffer. <laughs> good. That's what we like to hear. Um, other quick bits of news. Um, interesting. Sony is lowering its PS5 production number because they're sadists <laughs> to at least a million, which means. <laughs> <laughs> they won't, they're going to stop making that ready, even though no one can get one. I, it's weird, that, isn't it? What's that about? Uh, it's, so I get this at my other job, my Ooh. real work as well. Um, it's just a chip shortage that's, that's going on. Right. Um, so they basically can't get hold of the semiconductors that they need to make. Um the PS5, so they've had to reduce their numbers by at least a million. Um, but this is affecting everyone that makes um, electronics. It was sort of like a perfect storm at the start of um, the pandemic in that everyone, all the factories shut because no one was going in there. So then everyone was at home uh, buying more consumer electronics, basically. Right. So semiconductors are at such a premium now that there's lead times of in excess of 52 weeks. So you put an order in for your semiconductors and then you'll get them in a year's time. Wow. So it's, that's just, it's just mental at the moment. So it's going to be, you know, because people can't get a PlayStation now, can they? It's really rare. Oh, well, no. they can't, can they get a Series X and there's more of them now or is there not? <laughs> Um, Series S seems quite available. Right. So I was toying with the idea of getting one for the bedroom, but but right. we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every, everything's struggling, and I think they're saying that it's going to continue into next year. Wow. Um, I, I could quite easily see it going into 2023 as well. The shortage is that bad. Wow. So it is hard, isn't it, when you're thinking about games like Starfield, which are Series X only. Mm. But yeah, I suppose it does make sense then to keep stuff as cross-gen for as long as possible, yeah, simply yeah. because there's, there's that not few people, people with the new console. Yeah. But I suppose Nintendo's always had this trouble. Because <laughs> you, <can't, laughs> you can't get a Switch. It's hard still to get a Switch, isn't it? This, what did they say? I think they said we're about halfway through our console cycle. I'm like, fair play to Nintendo, just yeah. going off and doing their own thing and yeah. making a, a mint yeah. doing it as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, other quick news: the uh, Rainbow Six Extraction game has got a January release date. I think it's the only one of the only games that's in January now. Um, <laughs> and Rainbow Six people were like this. This looks really dull to me, but I'm not right. Is this the one. Alien, the Alien Rainbow yeah. Six one? Yeah. I noticed it was going to be um, sorry, for $40 instead of a full price game. So okay. that, 30, 35 pounds for us. Yeah, 30 to 30, so, yeah. But um, a budget title by yeah. Ubisoft standards. But people were like that, I think. Just look like generic aliens that we've talked yeah. about this before. Um, you, did you say you saw some look at the Halo Infinite campaign? Uh, just in the last couple of hours, uh, Game Informer have released their um, cover cover articles for the, for this month. It's going to be Halo Infinite. And they put a couple of videos up um, showcasing some of the um, the gameplay from the campaign. 
Um, but it was just interesting to watch it because even even he said it was during like the early stages of this campaign that the grapple hook was being used so much more than I was expecting. So he was using it on the jackals that have the shields. Yeah. And um, whenever he hits them with the grappling hook, they sort of recoil and lift the shield up. So just seeing stuff like that and how how easily it's going to become um, a mechanic that you use quite often was, was impressive to see. And they showcased a new weapon. I can't remember what it was called, but it looked like um, one of the carbine rifles, but with a bit extra... Uh, power behind it um but yeah it was looking really really good Great. really excited for that yeah it's quite soon isn't it really when, when is that coming out uh 8th of december oh it's not that far it's less than a month just less than a month wow god i'm not finishing games i've got to finish games, <laughs> so games i've got to finish um i still haven't done that um 12 minutes game Oh, I've played a bit of that. Yeah, I've not done any of it. I, th- I didn't review it, did I? No, I didn't, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, good. Um, that's kind of really at the notes. And just before we go, we're going to just talk a little bit about, because you're, you're about to review the um, anniversary edition of Skyrim, aren't you? We chatted briefly about GTA. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, you're going to play that game again. <laughs> Um, and it's coming to Game Pass again. But this, I think you had a nice idea, didn't you, Richard, about this? Just maybe, oh, we're going to have James on here as well. It's completely slag it off. Um, <laughs> but our first impressions, playing that back in 2011, what can you remember that first feeling, the things that you were impressed with, first of all? Um, I can't really remember the, the, the opening moments, but there was just one thing I was, I was wandering around the world and um, some of the really stuck out for me was there was um, one of the flame um, At- Atronax, I think they were called. Mm. Um, so there were various like spirits based on different elements. And this one was sort of attacking a goat and I could see it in the distance. <laughs> and it was just firing these fireballs at this goat. And one of them hit the goat and it flew it off the cliff into like um, down a waterfall and then into the pool of water below it. And I was just like, so what, the, I just, and I got this sense of like, this is probably happening all around this world. And if <laughs> I'm not there to watch it, you know, what is it? If, um, a tree falls in yes, the forest. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It just felt like I got this sense of awe about the world. And it was like, even even in Skyrim, I felt pretty small. Yeah, yeah. I think it's trying to remember the things that at that time were really impressive, especially in a kind of open world. I think the first thing that I remember struck me is like when you near the start, you go into your first village, and people were going around working, doing things. Yeah, and that hadn't happened before. People would just stand there waiting for you to go up and chat to them, wasn't it? Or they just sort of walk around in weird diagonals or something. But, you know, there's someone chopping wood. Mm. But it would depend on what time it was, well it was. It, yeah. If, if it was night time, they weren't going to be there. No, that's right. And I, I remember being completely wowed by that. Yeah. Looking up at the sky at night for the first time and seeing the stars and the moon, that was just really impressive. Mm. I remember it because the, um, the constellations in the game were like your skill trees as well. And the first, the first time that you leveled up, and you were like, "What, what do I do?" Because you, had, you were, you, you created your character, but other than that, that was the only choice you really got. You were then free to do it however you wanted. Yeah. And yeah. you just had these skill points, and that, however many skill, different skill trees, and you're just massively overwhelmed with like, <laughs> what do I even put it in? Yeah. And I think it was that sense of just journey. I remember going, go, going up the mountain for the first time, that big, huge mountain. Meet the, is it the Whisperers? Is that the name of them? Um, the monks. They give you the dragonborn oh. powers. Yeah. And you're going, oh, there's this long journey up that mountain. 
that went for ages. I thought that, and you could see the world. I, I remember just being how impressed that was. And it, like you said, it did feel like this real massive open, di- you know, really diverse world of mountains and there's some sea bits. And it just was, you just feel like, wow, there's so much to do here, isn't there? See, why wouldn't you want to play it again? Because I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't going to look as good as I remember it. I'm going to get on there like James loaded it up for the first time a year ago when it was awful there was bugs everywhere you couldn't understand it i don't want to be i don't want my dreams to be ruined <laughs> um i think as well i remember the kind of like seeing the sort of like the, the the army attacking at some point you sort of like the big warfare ones that oh, you've yes. been impressed yeah. at the time i mean there might only be six of them now <laughs> six people <laughs> it was it was a lot a lot of processing power back yeah. in the day no, it's a good, it's a very good game. But good luck again. It's eighty hours of your life gone. GTA is going to be another eighty. Just, I, I've got no better to do. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts, Richard? You want to say about Skyrim before we oh. sign off? Well, no, because cause something what I'm looking forward to is about Skyrim, so I'll leave it for that. Okay, brilliant. Um. What are we looking forward to next week, the two of us? I, I don't know what I've got. Oh, yes, I have. I've got, I'm Sherlock, a young Sherlock, chapter one. It's not called that. Sherlock Holmes, chapter one, um, is coming out on the 15th. And I can talk about that a bit more next week because I've been playing it. So I can chat all about that. Um, looking forward to hearing that. Yeah. What about you, Richard? Um, well, starting any minute now is... Uh... A celebration of the music of Skyrim as uh, they're putting on a free uh, concert on YouTube. Oh. So I'm probably going to go downstairs and watch. I get you in the mood. Have the music again. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the music now. Oh, I can't remember. No, it would come to me. Yeah. It was good. The soundtrack was great. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very good. Um, <laughs> I've also got. Um, I'm seeing a registrar tomorrow. To oh. sort of finalise the details for our wedding yeah which got delayed because of Covid mm. yeah well good good news about that as well um, great Richard thank you if, we, if you want to get hold of you where will we find you I'm on Twitter and Instagram at double1912 great and you can find me at, at Twitter and Twitch but thank you Richard it's been good just a two of us again and uh, we'll see you next time bye bye Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. 